This tutorial is on how to install WordPress manually. Um, there's a lot of web hosts out there that will automatically install WordPress for you, but if you have a web host that doesn't do it automatically, or you find yourself that you simply just want to manually do it, then here is how. So um, let's get started. First off, there's a couple things that you will need when um, you are going to install WordPress. Uh, first off, you're going to need FTP access to your web host. Okay, a way to be able to connect to the web host. An FTP client software of some sort that is going to allow you to connect to that web host. Um, an HTML editor. I prefer Coda myself, but you could use simply text edit or WordPad or whatever other uh, HTML editors that are out there. There are a bunch. And lastly, a web browser of your choice so you can test it and view it all. Alright, so let's talk about a few things. First, let's just talk about an overview of um, how you know web development is typically done and then how WordPress is done. Basically, for a website to be developed, you first need to have a domain name, yourname.com, and you can purchase that in a number of different places. GoDaddy is one that is pretty popular. Then uh, we need to also purchase a web host from GoDaddy or Bluehost or one of the other ones that are out there. Then, basically, at that point, um, traditionally in the past, we've just created HTML pages and we upload that to our web host. And then when someone comes by and visits that domain name, it then redirects to the web host, which then shows those HTML files in your web browser. So that is kind of the typical way that a web page or a website is done. And, and WordPress isn't that much different. It's very, very similar to this. The only difference... Um, is a little bit towards the end. So basically we do the same thing, we purchase a domain name, we get a web host. Then the difference is, is we go to wordpress.org and we download WordPress. Then we have to use, um, have FTP access so we can upload using something like transmit all the WordPress files to our web host. Once all the files are on our web host, we then need to go into our web host control panel and create a MySQL database. All right. Once that database is connected, this is where we'll need an HTML editor. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect WordPress with the database. Once those are connected, we are ready to rock and roll. We can get our web browser of choice, and we can go with our computer, visit the domain name, and when we can go and visit, uh, which will then redirect to the web host, then through the database, it will then bring WordPress onto our website and show our website, which is WordPress uh, powered. So that is kind of the overview of what we'll be doing. So in this tutorial, let's actually show you how it is done and, um, and go from there. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to assume that you've already purchased a domain name and hosting. Um, there are a lot of different hosts that you can do and, and registrars. Um, I've listed in this uh, tutorial in the text uh, uh, basically some different ways uh, that you can purchase those and some suggestions. But purchase the domain name and get the hosting. Okay. Then what you want to do is come over to WordPress.org and you're going to want to download WordPress. At this point it's 3.2. All right. So then it'll take you to this page and then it'll say download WordPress 3.2. And you can see it's only, you know, three megabytes big. It's really, really small. It's not very large at all. And then, um, then it's a matter of just uh, uploading that to your server. So this is where I'm going to go myself to transmit and this is where I've got my FTP client. So I'm going to take this WordPress install and you can see it kind of downloads as a .zip file. So depending on where you want this domain name to be, so if you want it to be yourdomainname.com and then everything to be right there on the root level of your domain name, then you want to upload it right to the root server of your uh, of your web host. But if you want it to be in some sort of subfolder, for example, yourdomain.com slash blog slash, and then it'll be whatever page it is, then you'd want to create a folder first. So I'll kind of walk you through that. But the first thing after you download is just unzip it or expand it, however you'd like to use it, and then you'll get a folder that's called WordPress. Now this is the difference is if you want to put it in a subfolder, if you want it to be on the root level. So in our particular case, we want it to be on the root level. We want it to be right there, so it's our domain name.com 
uh, slash whatever it is. But if you want it to be in a folder, you might want to create a folder and call it something like blog, for example, and then you want to upload it there. So then it'll be your domain name dot com slash blog and then all the files. Okay. So, but for our purposes, we're just going to put it right on the root level here. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that folder and I'm going to grab all of these files and I'm going to upload all of these to the server. I'm going to drop it. Okay, so that'll take a little bit of time to uh, to upload. I'll pause it here just for a minute until those uh, finish uploading. Okay, we, so we've just finished uploading all of the WordPress files. So this is kind of what the WordPress files look like. You'll see most of the files start with a WP for WordPress, except for some README license in the index file and the XML file down there. So that's kind of what it looks like. So we have successfully completed and uploaded that to our server, okay? The next step is for us now to go and create a database, all right? It seems like people get kind of scared when they go and they think about, oh, I have to create a database, and it's really not that scary. You don't have to know a lot about databases to be able to kind of take that step. So um, since our web host is currently with GoDaddy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, the GoDaddy login, and you'll see um, your web hosting account right here. Once you've got your web hosting, just click the Launch button right here, and that will open up the page to launch. Okay, once you're there, we want to come down to this databases section right here. Okay, you'll see there's also a way to get to it up top here, but right here, either way. So we click MySQL, then you'll see a button right here that says Create Database. Okay, now to create a database, uh, it's just going to simply ask us to fill out some information. First off, what is the description? This one's just going to be called Demo uh, WordPress Database. And then what would you like the MySQL database username to be? So I'm just going to call this demo uh, WordPress database. Okay, typically it's all lowercase like this, no spaces. Um, and then over here, MySQL version, make sure you choose 5.0. Uh, WordPress needs to have uh, version 5.0 on it. And then allow direct database access. And, and you don't need to worry about this one. This is basically for only those types of databases that need external access and this one does not it's going to be local so you don't need to worry about that just keep it as no and then uh, let's create a password I'm just going to create a password here and then this right here the read only username this is kind of if, if you have users that don't you only want to be able to, re to read the database then you can put those in but as you can see this is optional so we're just gonna kinda keep it with what we have here so these things you're gonna wanna kinda remember and so if you don't have some sort of way of keeping track of it I just kinda jot it down in some sort of editor if you don't have it so in my particular case here the uh, username is this one right here so I'm just going to copy that over here, and I just did a simple password. I'll be deleting this after here, but I just did the password as demo. So I'm going to kind of keep that kind of tucked away, and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. OK, so once you have completed setting that up, it will show it on a list over here saying pending setup. OK, so you might have to wait till we can continue on until this pending setup is complete for wherever you set up that database. All right. So while that's kind of pending the setup, I'm going to take you through the next steps of, of getting this set up correctly. All right. So um, once you have a database, so basically all we've done so far is we have downloaded WordPress, put it on our server, and we have created a database. Okay. So the next step is simply go and visit that page. So go to yourdomainname.com and then um, visit the main page. And once you do that, it will look something like this. Okay, if you go directly there, it says there doesn't seem to be a wp-config.php file. I need this before we can get started. Okay, so basically what you're going to find is if we go back to transmit here, they have something in here called wp-config-sample. Okay, so this is where you're going to need an HTML editor of some sort. So what we need to do is we need to open up this sample file. 
So once we open this up in an HTML editor, there's a few things that we need to put in. The database name, username, password, and the local host. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, the database name and the username we know, and same with the password because we created that ourselves. The username is going to be the same as the database name for using GoDaddy here. And then we created the password, so we put that in there as well. And then for some WordPress installs, localhost um, will be good enough to put in there, but for others, you have to actually go and get the exact uh, data boat, MySQL host name. And so here's how we get that, is once uh, we come into the database section, we can see there's a button here that says Manage via PHP My Admin. And if we click this and we um, log in, then you'll see a... Uh, little window here that is what's called a PHP my admin to be able to manage the database and this is where we're gonna find that local host you see this here that is what we need to copy and what we need to come into here and paste into where it says local host okay so we've got the username for the database name too, the password and then our database name host so I'm gonna go ahead and save this now once I have that saved, I come back over here to my FTP client. You can see right here that there it is, wp-config-sample.php. And what I'm going to need to do is come in here and delete the sample portion. Okay, done. Now what I can do is I can come back to my page and refresh it, and I'm going to get this page now. The official WordPress installation page. Okay, and this is how we actually make that connection from the database to uh, WordPress. So now they're connected, now we're just getting WordPress set up. So we go ahead and set up a site title. I'm just going to call this demo. Decide what you want your username to be. Um, I'd recommend not using admin because it's it's most common. So do something more complicated for your username to keep your site secure. I'm just going to keep it admin to be simple and my password just admin to keep things simple here as well. And then go ahead and put in your email. So whatever you want that to be. Okay, so then um, you also have the option to say, allow my site to appear in search engines like Google and Technorati. So you can choose if you want it to appear in search engines right away. Okay, so I'm going to keep that on. Then just simply hit install WordPress, but make sure before you hit this install WordPress that you remember the username and the password because um, it's going to be very difficult and you might have to reinstall it if you don't remember those things. So make sure you remember those, but hit install WordPress. Okay, then it's going to give you a message like this. Success, WordPress has been installed. Uh, we're expecting more steps. Sorry to disappoint. They kind of kind of pride themselves in how easy it is to install a database-powered website. So it certainly is very, very easy. And that is it. We have officially installed WordPress. So I'm going to go ahead and hit log in here. And then it, right away it's going to ask us to... Uh, put in our username and our password. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to put in admin and the password. I'm going to get going to hit log in. And here we are in the back end of WordPress. All right. So voila, we have completed it, as you can see. So, um, you know, you can see all the items on the left hand side, post, media. And if you want to see the front end, just simply click right here where it says demo and it'll take you to the front end of the website and we can see, uh, see how it looks. So it's looking pretty good. You can see, um, title, we've got some sliders. So some nice things right out the gate that we can kind of do with, uh, with WordPress, but from this point on, it's now about customizing it and getting it and molding it to how you want it to be. But hopefully that makes sense on how to install WordPress uh, manually. And I guess in this particular case, using GoDaddy as your um, web host. So uh, put if you have any questions, put it in the comments and I uh, hope this helps you. So good luck with WordPress and uh, thanks for watching.